What is up ladies and gentlemen, man here, welcome back to the channel, good morning, it's a nice windy morning here down in the south of Austria. I wanted to answer, quickly answer a very interesting question that came up during a recent live stream and that is the one, many, how many climbers, how, how big is the percentage of climbers that actually reaches their potential max lifetime grade? And at first I had to think a bit about the question but then I figured okay probably the percentage of people who actually reach their potential is super super low and there's a couple of reasons for that if i would have to think about am i actually able to reach my potential in this lifetime then i already have to say no so i for certain am not amongst the the lucky crowd right <laughs> who's who's um who started early enough in their life with the sport to be actually able to reach their potential. Because let's face it, if you want to reach your genetic potential, you actually have to start at ages like five or six years old. I mean, that's, that's kind of Ondra level starting age, right? And then, only then, if you really push the sport and never, um, you know, never leave it to the side, always keep trying hard, always keep improving, only then, if you start that early, you will actually reach your limit. And then it obviously only depends on your genetics where you end up, right? If you have really good genetics, like Adam does, for example, you're going to reach up at 9B+, 9C. Right? If you have decent genetics, you're still going to end up at 9A probably, somewhat along these lines. If you have bad genetics, you might still end up at 8B or 8A plus or something along these lines, simply because you started so early, and this makes a huge difference, right? You can you can you can outclimb bad genetics simply if you start so early. This has a number of advantages. You just simply do all the injuries, for example, you climb them away in your early stages, in your early age, when you don't even recognize them. I remember they did an interview with Adam Ondra. And he was showing his crazy mutated hands, you know, with these super big joints, super thick tendons and everything. And they asked him, man, do you actually not ever get injured in your fingers and stuff with all these crazy forces that you do training five to six to seven, eight hours a day on super small crimps and all that? And he said, no. And he was looking at them like, why are you asking such a stupid question? No, of course, I don't get injured. So <laughs> he really doesn't really, he doesn't have this kind of problems because the dude climbed his first 9A when he was 13 years old. So obviously, he already had to go through these injury phases on the way to his first 9A in his early childhood when he doesn't even notice these injuries, you know, because there is so rapid cell division, there is, uh, you know, tissues still regenerate so quickly. It might be a small little tweak and then it's gone the next day. What is a six-month pulley soreness for a elder dude, right? Is for him only one day, maybe a little bit of discomfort and then it's gone if you're still 12, 13 years old. So this is the kind of stuff that we're talking about. If you really want to reach your limit, then you have to start really early. This is number one and obviously we cannot influence that, right? This is something that lies... This is decision making that is actually dependent upon our parents, what they do and not even so much our parents as well because even if the parents really push you into a sport then it could also end up, it could also backfire and it end up the other way around that you really hate the sport. So it's really like a complex psychological thing that is at work there and uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to find that out myself but um, the way how you approach you know, introducing a child, a young person to a sport so that they actually like it, okay, and that they get not annoyed by it because you're pushing them so much and stuff. Yeah, it's, it's a psychological thing that's going on there, but that's a different story. So anyway, this is more in the hands of your parents than in your own hands, that you start early enough to actually reach your potential so that, that we cannot really influence just like genetics, we cannot really influence our genetics, but our genetics, which have an influence, of course, as well on where we end up in a lifetime in terms of max grade, uh, yeah, 
these are gonna let you end up somewhere anyway, right? You can't change that, depending on how early you start, but we already discussed that. Another thing that is super crucial when it comes to reaching your uh, actual limit lifetime, max grade, whatever you wanna call it, is privilege. This is something that is super overlooked as well by the community. People keep asking, what can I reach? What can I reach? And the question that I ask always, well, what kind of job you have? What kind of family situation you have? Do you have a nine to five job? Do you have three kids? Uh, how much time per week can you actually afford to spend with the sport? Not everybody is not not everybody is like Adam who spends f in, on average probably five hours per day for the sport. I mean, in a week that's five times seven. That's thirty five hours a week. Who can spend that? That is a full time job. That's almost a full time job, right? Who can spend that? We all, most of us have normal jobs, right? Most of us, most of us have families. Um, there is just not much, so much time. You have to have extreme privilege to be able to afford such a time expenditure for the sport. And obviously, only such a time expenditure is gonna get you to your real limit, even if you start very early. So yeah, you gotta you gotta have someone who sponsors your journeys. You gotta have someone who sponsors your your climbing van. Your you gotta have someone someone who sponsors your sponsors your food, your gear, uh, your gym membership, and all that kind of stuff. You know these stuff these stuffs cost money, but it's absolutely necessary if you really want to get your, to your limit. You need to get the mileage in the mileage in different terrains on different rocks. So all these kind of things uh, influence whether um, people actually reach their max lifetime limit. And this is why I say only a super minute minority uh, of people, whether genetically gifted or not, actually reaches their max grade potential because they have to be lucky enough to start super early, which they cannot really influence. And they also have to be lucky in the sense that they have to have a lot of privilege. And uh, yeah, this is my opinion on the subject, I would say. Let me know down below. I mean, when it comes to actual percentage, it's probably 0.01% of all climbers live the sport in such way that they reach their um, lifetime potential. That is my rough estimation. Let me know down below what's your rough estimation. Let me also know down below what's your opinion on the on the privilege thing and everything. I think I always find it quite interesting to talk about these kind of topics. And that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you liked it. Uh, drop a like if you did. That's always appreciated. And I'll see you soon in the next one, guys. Bye. Stay strong.